All right, so let's move on from quadratic functions, which are usually our simplest ones to look at, to general polynomial functions. Okay, so graphing functions of the, of the form f of x equals ax to the n. Okay, so let's consider uh, odd exponents, uh, comparing f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals x to the fifth. All right, are we doing anything major to our basic function x cubed? And the answer is not really. We're just, uh, instead of cubing x values, we're now taking them to the fifth power. And so what we can see in the graph is that that red function, x to the fifth, is just going to increase and decrease faster. All right, it, it's, uh, it goes up faster and down faster. All right, what about if we change the exponents uh, to even? All right, so maybe comparing x squared and x to the fourth. All right, and again, what are we doing to the x's? Well, instead of squaring them, now we're taking them to the fourth power. And so our basic parabola is just going to be a little bit narrower, as we can see with the red graph. All right, so there with the red graph, g of x equals x to the fourth, what we're seeing is that it just goes up a whole lot faster because those x values are being taken to the fourth power. All right, all right, so let's consider the graph now uh, of a times uh, x minus h in parentheses to the nth power plus k. So this looks like our vertex form from quadratic functions, but you can note it, you can see there that our exponent is just a general n and not necessarily a 2. All right, well, we're going to see a lot of similarities. If a is negative, the graph is reflected across the x-axis. All right, if the magnitude of A is greater than 1, then the graph is going to be narrower. And if the magnitude of A is between 0 and 1, then the graph is going to be wider. All right, these are all standard translations and, and changes that we have saw for exam 2. All right, H, just like always, is going to represent the horizontal translation. And k, of course, will represent our vertical translation. So again, there's nothing new here, guys. All right, so let's consider g of x equals x to the fifth minus 2. Can we graph this? Sure we can. All right, it's our plain old f of x equals x to the fifth with what done to it? Well, that minus 2 translates the, the uh, function down to units. And so we can see here in the graph how the blue basic function just simply shifted down two units. Each coordinate moves down two. All right, what about negative, and then in parentheses, x minus one, all to the fourth power plus four? All right, what have we done to the plain old basic x to the fourth function? Well, that negative out in front flips the entire x to the fourth over the x-axis. The minus one moves the graph to the right one, and the plus four moves our graph up four. All right, so let's compare the blue basic function to the red new one. All right, and the key is watching what I would call the vertex point right here. All right, how did this point move? Well, according to our function g, it went to the right one, and it went up four, and the negative makes it flip. Okay, and so we can see how our shifted function compares to our basic function. All right, let's talk a little bit about domain and range of general polynomial functions. Okay, guys, this one should be easy. The domain of every polynomial function, by definition, is negative infinity to infinity. All right, that's an easy one. All right, so what about range? All right, the degree of a polynomial is determined by the leading term. That's the largest exponent. Okay, so the largest exponent we see is going to be called the degree of the polynomial. All right, so for example, f of x equals 3x to the 6th minus 2x cubed plus 12x minus 7. All right, notice the largest exponent is a 6. All right, this polynomial has degree 6 and is considered even because 6 is an even number. All right, 
And so this is going to help us understand the range of polynomials. The range of an odd degree polynomial, so 3, 5, 7, 9, and so forth, those ranges will always be negative infinity to infinity as well, just like the domain. All right, so what happens when it's even? The range of an even degree polynomial is either negative infinity to the maximum with a bracket or bracket minimum to infinity. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what this looks like. Here are pictures of odd degree polynomials. Okay, notice um, here we have a degree of 3. All right, how do I know it's degree of 3? All right, this goes back maybe to um, some high school math, but it's the number of turns plus one, okay? And so what do I mean by the number of turns? All right, here's a turn, here's a turn. Maybe you guys called them humps in high school or bumps, but we have two turns, which gives us a degree of three, okay? But regardless, all right, what we're seeing is an odd degree polynomial whose domain and range is negative infinity to infinity. All right, similarly over here. Here's a turning point, here's a turning point. All right, that is another degree of three. All right, it's an odd degree polynomial. And so again, we're seeing domain and range is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, here, I'm telling you it's degree five, but can we figure that out just by looking at it? All right, here's a turn, here's a turn, here's a turn. And here's a turn. How many turns is that? That is four turns or four humps or four bumps, which gives us four plus one or degree of five. And again, because it is an odd degree polynomial, we see that the domain and range is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, let's take a look at, and let me go ahead and add here uh, with this pop-up. All right, when I say zero, all right, a zero is a synonym for crossing the x-axis okay, or touching the x-axis. It's also called a solution, and it is also called an x-intercept. All right, so just keep that in mind. I can use these words interchangeably, zero, solution, and x-intercept. All right, what about even degree polynomials? All right, so grabbing my pen here. All right, here's a turning point, here's a turning point, here's a turning point, here's a turning point, and here's a turning point. That gives me five turning points. Five plus one is six, which is how I'm getting degree six. Okay, notice that the ends of this even degree polynomial point down. All right, and so because they both go down, that means that the polynomial attains some maximum value, and it does so here at this arbitrary k. Thus, for this even degree polynomial, our range is negative infinity to this maximum value. Okay, let's look over here. Turning point, turning point, turning point. Three turning points. Three plus one is four, which gives me the degree of four. All right, for this even degree polynomial, both ends point up, all right, which says, hey, I'm going to have a minimum. The minimum occurs, the minimum y value occurs down here at this arbitrary k. So the range for this even degree polynomial is that minimum value k all the way to infinity. That's a terrible infinity, but hopefully you heard me rather than just trying to read the writing. Okay, so here's my pop-ups again explaining uh, how it is either going to be negative infinity to the maximum or the minimum to infinity depending on how our even degree polynomial is oriented.